Now we're simply tapped in one wire, tapped into the mass airflow, the signal wire. There's three things we can look over here. We can look at the scanner, we can look at the component information, and we can look at the lab scope. Now this is going to display everything. I don't want to see everything, so I'm going to customize this, deselect it all, and I'm going to look at the mass airflow in hertz. Now, I'm reading 2.4. I'm going to turn that into a graph. Now we're sitting here at idle, and whenever we activate a graph, it is going to show us what it has seen or is seeing. We're sitting here at idle, and it's showing a hertz of 2400 to 2442. But that's because that's all it has seen. We have not raised the RPM up. But our minimum value at idle then is somewhere around 2400. But let's see what happens when we raise the idle. Now as you look over the side, you see that it went down to 2272 and it went as high as 5685. So it changed the parameters because we changed the parameters of what it wants to look at. Now our minimum is 22, maximum 55, but we're reading 23.8. We're reading over 2,300 and some hertz. Oftentimes that's going to be converted to kilohertz, so you just move it over three zeros and be 2.3 kilohertz. Now I want to go back to the custom here, and I want to add to this our TPS, and I want to add engine speed. So now I've got three things that I want to look at. I'm looking at TPS, mass airflow in hertz, and engine speed. Now again, I'm sitting here at idle. I want to readjust these for a higher idle. Now as you look at this, and I'm going to pause it, and looking at this waveform, you can see that the TPS, when I step on the throttle and goes up, and then the air goes up as well, and the engine speed goes up. So all of these should be somewhat in relation to each other. If one of them is really different or have glitches, of course you'd want to check that out. I'm going to start this back up again now. So our hertz is about 2.3 kilohertz at idle. Now the way to test this is we want to go up to 2500 for a few seconds and see what happens. So if I'm looking at my engine speed, I'm right now about 600. I keep that around 2500. It's really hard to keep that exactly at 2,500. Somewhere in this range right in here, engine speed was about 2,500. And our mass airflow was reading, well, there's 4,000 or 4 kilohertz. So we were reading maybe 4,2 or 4,5, somewhere in that range, at the same time that we were about 2,500 RPM. Now, when you're looking at all data, you're going to see that it says at idle, it should be around 2.3 kilohertz, and we can actually create idle in the garage. Now also when you look at the all data spec, it's saying that it ought to be about 100 hertz at maximum load. That's not 2500. We cannot generate in the shop setting here maximum load. So we're not going to see 100 hertz or 10 kilohertz. In the shop, we really can't create maximum engine load. To do that, you'd actually have to be out driving, lock it down into second gear, and redline the engine. That's not really diagnostics for drivability. That's why we have the spec of 2,500 RPM, and you want about a 4.2 kilohertz. Really, this spec here of 10,000 hertz is more for like engine performance and putting a car in a dyno, and you're trying to get maximum load. Now keep in mind, this all needs to be seen in about a four-second interval. The computer is looking for this all the time. 
if in a particular four second interval it doesn't see what it's anticipating, that's when it'll set the check engine light. And I'm going to exit out of here, and instead of the scanner, now I'm going to go into component information. The component information, I'm going to do a frequency test. Now under the frequency test, you can see that it's telling us the spec should be about 2.3 kilohertz at idle. And when you go up to 2500, it should be about 4.2. And that's the range that we were in. So in other words, that's the frequency, that's the range, or that's the radio station that it's looking for. If it sees that in a four second period, everything's fine. Now again, this is under component information or a component test. We're looking at a five second sweep and our data over here. Now this is Hertz. Now keep in mind, under component test, we're looking at the mass airflow and we're displaying frequency. Oftentimes when you're using a lab scope, most of the time it is showing volts over here and time over here. But when you go into component information, since we're looking at frequency, that's what the mass airflow sensor is generating is a frequency, then our frequency is over here. Now to illustrate that a little differently, oftentimes we look at voltage. So I want to go out of here, and I'm going to go into my scope. Now why would we want to use a lab scope if we can already see data on a scanner and through the component test? Because a lab scope gives us the ability to zoom in and see things that we couldn't see without it. It gives us a lot more control. Now we look at our lab scope and we were set on frequency so we're going to have to change that. So we're going to choose volts instead of frequency and then our lab scope will suddenly display volts. We clear these screens off and you can see underneath that we're showing another scope pattern across this 10 second frame and it looks different there's something there it's it's moving across and we can measure it but we're gonna to have to take a little closer look so let's zoom in again now instead of a 10 second pattern let's change it to a one second pattern in other words it takes one second to go across this screen but that's still not enough so let's go down to one millisecond now it's taken one millisecond to paint across this screen now we can see what's going on here, but we want to be able to measure this. So let's take our trigger. We can move our trigger wherever we want, and let's put it over at the very beginning of this, so that it will start painting at the very beginning. And now we can count. Now, remember, frequency is what we're looking at. So as we look down here, it's on, it turns off, and then it turns back on. There's off, and it turns back on. And this is one frequency, it turns off, turns back on, a second frequency, off and then back on, point something. So we've got one, two, point three frequency across this screen. Now if you look down at the data, it's saying 4.5, but that's because remember we're reading volts now on the left hand side. If we want to count our frequency, we have to count across the right side. Now I'm going to turn this back on. and. Remember we were looking for 2500 RPM too. So let's boost the RPM up here and see what this pattern looks like at the same time. So we rev the engine up and we're going to stop this so that we can measure. Our frequency, our trigger I mean, is still over to the left. So that's the beginning of the first one. So now as we look at these, we're going to be reading uh, frequency. So there's the beginning, our first frequency, second, third and fourth point something. 4.4 4 is what it's reading. Now the thing about code P0101 is it is basically saying that the PCM is anticipating a frequency or a radio station that it wants to listen to and it's not hearing that so it sets this code. So you see frequency is very very important and the PCM is very, very critical about what it wants to listen to or the frequency that it wants. It'd be kind of like if you're tuning into that radio station and you're not quite there. You can kind of hear a little bleed over from another station. In other words, the frequency isn't just perfect. The frequency in this was not perfect. It set the code.
we installed a new mass airflow sensor, got that frequency back to where the computer was looking for it. Check engine line is fine. Now when we talk about a mass airflow ugly signal, sometimes that can be caused from just a dirty hot wire. As you know, many times you can clean that and it'll correct the situation. You look and see this dirty, got a little fuzzies or crud on it. You clean that off and send it back down the road. Sometimes that works, but sometimes cleaning it doesn't because the frequency is not right. So this will now give you the ability to check that frequency, clean the mass airflow sensor, make sure it's back into frequency because it was dirty or ugly, or if it doesn't come back into frequency, then you should replace the mass airflow sensor because it's not capable of generating the frequency that the PCM is looking for.